Today I'm going to show you how to make a kryptonite batarang. For this build, I use hot glue, silicone, universal mold release, resin, glow-in-the-dark powder, mixing cups, plastidip, side cutters, Legos? Trust me, it'll make sense in a bit, I promise. Just bear with me here. Cutting tools, sanding tools, safety gear, blue gloves. Would that fall under safety gear? Scissors, razor pens, and a box cutter. First, I made a batarang. I'm gonna blow through this process because I covered it in another video, link below. But essentially, I just drew it, traced it onto some scrap foam, cut it out, and painted it. Now I'm gonna need to make a silicone mold of it. So for that to work, the batarang surface has to be as smooth as possible. So I went back in and filled in the rough areas with putty. Doesn't matter what kind of putty. Well, I guess Bondo would be best. That red Bondo that's pre-mixed but I'm doing this because each little groove made by the grit of my sanding tools on a microscopic level are essentially like handholds on a rock climbing wall the liquid silicone is gonna surround and grab onto them and not want to let go when it solidifies so I filled those in with putty to smooth out the surface and then when the putty dried I painted over it with plastic it I did several coats of this until it was shiny the shinier it is the smoother the surface is and the less likely that the prop is gonna get embedded in the mold a dull non-reflective surface is gonna to be a sticky surface. Can't have that. While the paint dried, I built mold walls. Normally these are made out of foam core poster board, but I cannot for the life of me find my supply of foam core. So today I'm going to use Legos. I know it seems silly, but Legos actually make really good mold walls. Side note, literally the moment I finished this build, I found my poster board hidden behind my TIE fighter wings. Hashtag prop maker problems. Gotta clean my garage. While not waterproof, they are silicone proof, and the smooth surface allows for easy release. Not to mention, it saves a lot on hot glue that would otherwise be wasted on poster board walls that are inevitably going to get destroyed. The stud base plate is going to be a problem though, so I covered that up with flat studless pieces. They make larger ones and if you have access to those I recommend it because it cuts down on all those little grooves between the panels. But my Lego collection has not been <laughs> updated recently, like in the last decade. Unless you count my giant Lego lightsaber! Favorite prop. So, gonna use what I got. First I'm covering up that crack in between the plates, the base plates, just because it's the most likely spot for leaks to occur. They don't usually happen, but I like to try and prevent them from happening, like preemptively. Then I did the outer frame, and I filled in the rest of the interior space, and I worked my way inwards from there. As you may or may not be able to tell from some of the little bits of blue silicone still stuck to a few of these pieces, a smooth surface is not quite enough to get a good mold release, so both the prop and the mold interior are going to have to be sprayed down with release agent, essentially a grease. Although some people use talcum powder. Never tried that. I need the surface that the batarang rests on to be as flat as possible, so I'm trying to make sure that I don't use any of these pieces that have bits of silicone stuck to them on the interior of the mold where the batarang is gonna lie. I'm also leaving a small portion in the middle open because that's where the batarang will be glued down, and I think it'll make for a better grip. After all the flat pieces were down, I laid down the bricks of the outer wall. I'm gonna use the longest bricks possible in order to cut down on potential leak points. I ended up making this three layers tall. Two would have been enough, but it's important to have about a half inch of silicone backing on a mold that's this flat. Otherwise, when I try and demold my workpiece, it could rip. Now the plastic dip is dry on the batarang, so I can hot glue it into the mold. I don't want to melt the plastic, so I'm gonna place the blob of glue on the batarang first, and give it a few seconds to cool off just a little bit before I press it down. You'll notice that I didn't do as many paint layers on the back as I did on the front or the sides, and this is so that the hot glue would have a better grip. The mold is going to be the reverse of what I'm doing here. So this side is going to be totally exposed to the air when I pour in the resin later. So it's gonna be just as shiny as the interior, if not more shiny. I don't want this to break free after the silicone has been poured, so I'm going to place a large heavy machinist block on top of it as it cools. That could happen as the foam is a lot less dense than the silicone, making it buoyant when submerged. In fact, I don't typically recommend trying to mold foam. Normally I'd use MDF wood, but I didn't originally think about molding this when I first made it. Part of the point of the Batarang build was that you can cut down sanding blade edges by using triangular foam bevels. When the glue had solidified, I sprayed it with release agent. This is Smoothon's universal mold release. I will need way more thorough coverage than what I'm showing you here, but there's a smoke alarm right out of frame. <laughs> I don't want to set it off. 
So I'm doing most of the release spraying elsewhere. Okay, yeah, you see how much more shiny that is? That's gonna make for a good release. Oh, and you don't wanna let this sit for a while before you mix up your silicone because the release agent, you know, it's, it's an oil. It will very slowly slide off of your prop and onto the floor. So make sure you spray it right before you mix up your silicone. It's very important if you wanna get it to release from your mold later. I also coated the walls separately before attaching them so that I could get the best possible angle while spraying the edge of the battering. I'm using a trial kit of Umu 30 for this. I started by emptying the blue canister into my mixing bucket first because it's a bit thicker than the pink hardener, so it takes longer to pour. In fact, you may have to mix up each can individually first, depending on how long it's been sitting before you work with it, because the blue does kind of separate like a container of salad dressing might. There's a limited pot life with this stuff, and it is expensive, so you have to think about these things ahead of time. Then I mixed in the pink hardener it's supposed to be an exact one-to-one -one mix ratio. You can get away with an approximate mix ratio, but the way to tell for sure that the mixture is good enough is that it will turn from light blue to lavender. That can be a subtle change, especially if you're visually challenged. So the reference that I use is this old mold that I made, literally my first mold that I ever made, that had slightly less hardener than it should have had, but still came out solid. And I just make sure that my mixtures aren't bluer than that one. See, you can see how the top one got more pink, so therefore it's more lavender. Now, because this is not quite enough silicone, I also put chunks of old destroyed molds in the empty spaces to take up volume. See, each time you make a cast, you wear out the mold just a little bit, about 0.3% even when using release agent. But without using release agent, you'd be lucky to even get one use out of it. But eventually, the more duplicates you make, the more the mold wears out, and the interior takes on this mottled texture, and the mold has to be retired. However, the vast majority of volume of the mold is fine, and very useful for taking up space in new large volume molds that have a lot of empty space. So I cut away the worn out interior and reuse the good stuff. It just saves on the cost of silicone. Then I poured in the mixture, making sure to cover the whole battering. And now we wait. The solidifying time is six hours, but that's under optimal temperature and humidity. And I have neither. So for me, it took more like 14 hours. With silicone, it's best not to be in a hurry to demold. When it eventually hardened, I brought it back over to my normal workstation. So in order for it to lay flat, I gotta cut off all these parts that are sticking up. And it slices real easy. It's important that the mold walls lie flat when you pour so that you don't get a lopsided mold. For that matter, it's important that the mold lies flat when you pour in the resin so you don't get a lopsided piece. It's best just to have a level nearby when you're working. Then I demolded it, first by pulling off the base panels and then by taking apart the pieces. This is a time consuming process, but the more release agent you apply initially, the faster it'll go. In retrospect, I could have used a little bit more release agent. It all worked out, however, and when all the pieces were removed, I removed the batarang, some silicone cone worked its way underneath the wings, so I did have to remove that carefully with my razor pen and scissors. Then I was able to free each wing. You want to try and slowly work it out, not rip it out. Once it was out, I made sure there was no debris left in the mold, and then I sprayed it again with release agent. Then I brought it back over to the mold making station and began mixing up some epoxy resin with green fluorescent glow powder inside. I mixed it until the glow powder was evenly dispersed and transferred between the two mixing cups a couple of times just to get a better mix ratio. This resin has a longer working time than usual, so I took my time and made sure to do a thorough job. When I was satisfied the mix was even, I poured it into the mold, I tend to overestimate how much resin that I'll need because if I were to come up short, then I'd have to mix up more resin and it'd be nearly impossible to get the same amount of dye, or in this case, glow powder, in the new batch. Thus, there would be a cavity, or even worse, an entire layer of the prop with a different amount of translucence. I don't have to deal with that headache, so I just mix up a little bit extra and anything left over gets poured into kyber crystal molds and helps replenish the stock in my merch store. Link below. There's a bird in my water heater. Maybe if I scare him out. Oh, good. There he goes. No, not in the furnace. Ah, oh, jeez. And then I took a break to take apart a furnace. Okay, let's just fly into the pillowcase and be free. By this time, the resin is cured. This resin has a cure time of one to three days, so I gave it three to be on the safe side. When it had cured, I demolded it. I wiped off the grease, and then using my side cutters, I trimmed off some of the excess flash. 
Some of it was hard to get to, so I cleaned it up evenly on my belt sander and then polished those edges by spot touching it with a small amount of clear resin. And I was finished. I let it charge in a window for a few hours and then brought it into a dark room. To get the effect to work in the daytime, I lit it with ultraviolet LEDs. And now that I'm finished, I can finally kill Superman. Thanks for watching everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of future videos. Cause honestly, the subscribe button doesn't really do what it used to anymore. If you really like the video, maybe think about joining the patrons whose contribution makes these videos possible. Check out the past builds if you like. Let me know what you'd like to see me make next. Happy crafting, see you later. This will eventually be available in the merch store. I just still got to clean up the back a little bit. I mean, you can't actually see it in this lighting. And, you know, if you hang it on your wall, you never would see it, so. But it's bugging me, so I'm going to clean it up.